How's it going everybody? Welcome back. And today I'm going to be showing you guys how to get a South Korean IP address from anywhere. Now, there are many reasons why you might want to get a South Korean IP address, for example. I remember back in the days when Black Desert Online was actually exclusive to South Korea. Uh, that was one reason to get a VPN for that game. You know, if you're trying to access maybe the South Korean market or possibly Netflix, that's also another reason. So, yeah, there are plenty of reasons to do that. Um, and I'll show you guys how to do just that using a VPN, which is really the best way of uh, changing your IP address reliably, especially if you're trying to bypass geo restrictions. I'll be using ExpressVPN as an example, but you can also use Nord and Surfshark if you'd like, which are also great options. I'll talk about them later, but let's start with how to change your IP address. Now, if you're new to VPNs, it's pretty simple. You go to VPN locations and you change your uh, region here under Asia Pacific in this case. And we're going to go down to South Korea. Wait, I think I already passed it. Yep, there it is. Sorry about that. And okay. So as you can tell, I was um, connected to Germany here. Okay. And I, what is my IP address says that I was in Germany. So now that I'm connected to South Korea, it should change to South Korea right here. So notice the IP address just changed as well as the country now I'm in Seoul. So that's pretty useful. It's pretty good. That's it. That's pretty much how you change your IP address. And the same kind of um, the same principle uh, is applied to NordVPN. It's usually very self-explanatory in this case with NordVPN. You know, you can either use the um, the list here, look something up, or just pick it off of the you know off the, um, uh, the the map here. And with Surfshark, it's also the same. You know, you could go to locations, the list here, are all the locations and servers available, or you can look it up. So that's pretty cool. So what if you want to understand kind of your VPN a little more, right? So you want to go to okay. I'm gonna turn this off for now. And let's say you want to know what protocols to use or what is a protocol in the first place and like what, what what's the difference between lightweight and open VPN. Let's get through that real quick. So you could use automatic for all of the uh, VPNs available here, which will work. But let's say you're streaming and you want maximum efficiency when it comes to streaming. I would recommend using uh, lightweight Ex and express wireguard and surfshark and uh, nord links and uh, nord vpn these are all wireguard based protocols and they're optimized for something such as streaming and um, even mobile devices because they use less batteries since they have less lines of code so that's great open vpn is the best option when it comes to security so you want to use you want to use open vpn if you want to prioritize security and you're still not going to lose out on that much speed anyway except in express OpenVPN is actually faster than lightweight. TCP options, you want to forget about it across the board because it has very low download speeds. ICAF2 is quick, but it, it it may not work on all. It actually doesn't work on most networks. And then L2TP is outdated, so you want to forget about that. Um, you also have the kill switch, which also which is also available across the board for Surfshark and Nord and as well as well as split tunneling which is also available now a network lock or the kill switch will sever your internet access when you lose connection to your vpn so let's say you don't want to you kind of you don't want your isp to find out what you're doing if you disconnect your vpn you will revert back from the servers to uh from your vpn servers to your isp servers so if you want to avoid your kind of your isp i know in asia there might be some like restrictions when it comes to online activity so uh, the network clock will prevent your um connection from uh, going back you it will prevent you from connecting to your uh, isp server so that's pretty useful so the only way to get connection internet access is if you're only connected to your vpn so that's pretty useful split tunneling will let you pick which apps uh, go through the vpn connection and which don't uh, so that's that's pretty useful um, you also have a expressvpn exclusive here which is only use expressvpn dns servers while connected which will kind of force the expressvpn dns onto your device so that it prevents any data from leaking it's kind of like a security measure 
to keep your data from leaking, uh, giving you extra security and better performance. So you want to keep this on at all times. ExpressVPN will let you secure up to five devices and it comes with a premium price because it does offer the best uh, security in the market, arguably. So if you don't want to pay that kind of premium price, but you still want to get a really good VPN while also getting to secure uh, one more device per subscription, you can use NordVPN, which will give you this great UI, you know, a few features like uh, specialty servers, um, whereas in ExpressVPN, you don't get specialty servers, but mainly because all of their servers are optimized to do everything. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, with NordVPN, you get some specialty servers such as DoubleVPN, Dedicated IP, on, Onion Over VPN, and Peer to Peer, and you get a cool feature such as the app kill switch, which will kill your app instead of the internet. Uh, so that's pretty useful. Obfuscation is turned on manually, whereas it's on by default uh, in ExpressVPN while still getting access to all of these servers. Whereas in NordVPN, if I turn on obfuscation, which obfuscation, if you didn't know, obfuscated, uh, obfuscated servers will make it look like your um, internet traffic. It looks like any other browsing traffic so that your ISP won't even be able to tell that you're using a VPN in the first place. But in NordVPN's case, if I turn that on, I'll have access to much fewer servers. So that's not so cool. But if you are in a country where there's heavy restrictions, you might want to use that. But I'm going to turn it off so I can have access to more servers, as you can see. If you want to secure an unlimited amount of devices, this is where Surfshark comes in. This is the ultimate budget VPN. If, you, if you're just looking for a VPN that may not be as secure or as quick as Nord and Express, but just gets the job done, this is your way to go. It is the cheapest VPN. I believe it's just like $2 or $2 and a half for the two year plan. That's the problem with Surfshark and Nord is that if you want to get the cheap plan, you're going to have to stick with them for two years. So uh, whereas with Express, they're only trying to get you committed for up to one year uh, max. So uh, yeah, that, that, you may you may see that as a downside with Surfshark and NordVPN. So uh, yeah, you still get split tunneling, you still get kill switch, and you get the uh, great WireGuard protocol, which will give you great speeds. And you get uh, obfuscation with no borders mode and shadow socks if you're living in a uh, country with bad or uh, heavy restrictions. So yeah, that'll be it. Uh, if you're interested in any of these VPNs, you can find them. You can find links to special deals and discounts in the description down below. Uh, besides that, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. I'd love to answer all of your questions. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day.